good morning. Tell me why at 6 a.m. I want to dye my hair right now. The sun isn't even up yet. It's 6.24 a.m. I think it's time. Just like the leaves changing for this new season for the fall, I also think my hair is ready to transition into a darker shade of whatever this is. This orange red going on. I don't know where I'm getting this energy from. I haven't had any caffeine. This morning I'm using the Good All Vitamin C Dark Spot Care Serum. My mom put me on this and then I saw on Olive Young. It's like their number one bestseller so I'm like, let me try this out. This is like my fourth day on it so I don't know but it feels good. And then of course my Toradin Serum. I've been swearing by this for the past 6-7 months. I haven't even put on moisturizer or sunscreen yet. Hair dyeing. Morning angels. Good morning Charlie. We're dyeing our hair today me talking to me. So today I'm actually using the Adore hair dyes. I've used it before. I've used Cajun Spice before. I'm gonna mix Copper Brown and Cajun Spice. So hopefully it turns out well. I just want it to be darker. I don't want it to be black yet. I don't want to go full dramatic black. Like she's not there yet. Maybe once November hits and we're moving into like the darker months. I don't know if I want to dye my hair in this shirt. I just got it from Youth to the People and I love it. Oh, I'll flip it inside out. BRB. your head is ridiculous girl back of your head is ridiculous do you guys remember that you know colored hair is fun and all but it's a lot of work my hair maintenance used to be so easy when it was black so it's very tempting to go back to my original color but this is fun it's worth it i think it's worth it if you're down for the maintenance obviously the consistency of the door dyes are really interesting to be honest it's super easy to apply because of this molasses type consistency as opposed to cream in my very unprofessional opinion i think i'm just gonna put on a podcast and get to dyeing my hair i've been really into dr mindy peltz she talks about health in a way that is women focused so a lot of what she talks about revolves around our cycle i never knew how much our hormones affect the way we think the way we feel obviously the way we eat the way we do things around each week of our cycle yeah i think it's rare to have doctors who dedicate their work to studying how our periods coincide with our daily behavior and habits that make us who we are what society tells us that we're crazy or that we're we're just hard to work with it's so not that we actually have like this beautiful system that works for us and we're actually very powerful when we have all three hormones progesterone estrogen and testosterone like who else gets that no one else just ladies just females it's actually incredible anyway i'm like getting so passionate about it because i've been learning so much the past month so i'm fairly new to this world but it's a good world to be a part of well, that we think we're doing to reduce i really want you to take a step back and relook at walking as the great fitness tool there is because it can accomplish so much from a brain you hear that it can help she said walking is one of the greatest health tools out there I don't know a human on the planet right now that isn't cortisol saturated when stressors hit you over and over and over again the brain starts to go okay where's the next stressor where's it gonna be and all of a sudden you're like trying to find that next stressor and you might even find your you're like overreacting to small little things because the brain is try to keep you safe so walking can reorganize that part of the brain and i'll explain why here in a moment This is amazing! I love how the color turned out. I love how it's a wine dark cherry red. That transition when you go from light to dark is so spicy. Ooh, like who's that? She's a little mysterious. Mixing the two parts copper brown with the one part Cajun spice was perfect. The orange was so fun, but it was getting a little electric for me, so... I already did my morning routine while my hair was cooking up. I'm also dog sitting right now. I think I'm gonna walk the boy and go get a cup of coffee. Excuse me, I have to make the bed, baby. I have to make the bed, are you so comfortable? I know, I know.
ball of excitement. <laughs> my drip coffee. Lately, I've been having a bit of MCT oil with it as well as a splash of cream. MCT oil has been gearing me up for my days so well without the crash that sometimes coffee gives us. Works for me, I don't know. Definitely do your research before you take any influencer health advice, please. I just take some of the half and half and a splash just to break up the darkness. Give it a good mix. I know you guys are probably like, Tammy, you have a beautiful espresso machine at home. I think it needs some repair. It's pretty fragile. I love the way it looks, obviously. It's made a lot of incredible espresso shots. I don't know what happened. I went on my LA trip and I came back and it makes this weird noise. So I'm gonna have to reach out to Anza team to see if they can help me troubleshoot. I also have a pour over set from Fellow that I love too, but today I just wanted to take a walk to see my friend Jasmine over at the coffee shop. She's just always so sweet. And then June got to get some treats. There's nothing like capping your morning walk with a cup of coffee. That I like to do from time to time. Cheers. Mm. Oh yeah, and I'm drinking hot coffee. Who am I? Who am I? Listening to Dr. Mindy Peltz drinking MCT oil with hot coffee. I'm changing. I'm still the same me, but I'm changing. Changing for the better though. Good talk. I've also been starting my morning off with electrolytes and apple cider vinegar diluted in a tall glass of water. I'm still working on it. Somebody wants to say hi to you guys. Say hi everybody. I think it's time to make some lunch. I'm gonna make the little man his food first though. He's gonna have eggs, rice, and carrots. Does that sound good? <laughs> I know, almost done, almost done, okay? I have to really chop up his food because he literally has like three teeth left. He's an old man, it's okay. Okay, you ready? Time to make my food. I have these delicious sausages that I made yesterday. I also love to pre-cook jammy eggs. I'm telling you, boiling this at six and a half minutes at like a medium high temperature, immediately taking it out and then giving it the ice bath, perfect jammy eggs. Dang, June, he finished his food already. Did you breathe? He's like, huh? And lunch is served. I can't wait to break into the egg. My mouth is salivating. Okay, my. Ooh, oh my gosh. June? <laughs> okay, we're not gonna talk about what happened yesterday. I don't know what happened yesterday. Welcome to a new day. Before we get into the get ready with me portion of the video, you know how much I love perfumes and fragrances and smelling good. I recently found out about Scentbird. The genius behind this subscription makes all the sense. I don't have one signature scent. I like to rotate every couple of months or every few seasons or even daily depending on the activity that I'm doing. The thing is, is that when I buy full on perfumes that I can't commit to, I'm stuck with buying a 200, $300 bottle of perfume that just kind of sits on 
on the shelf. But I don't have to do that anymore thanks to Scentbird, who's the sponsor of today's video. Scentbird is the place to kind of discover the fragrances that fit your mood for the month. What they do is they give you a vial that lasts you 30 days for you to test it out and be like, I like this. Do I want to invest in this? Maybe yes, maybe no, or maybe just that little vial is enough for you. But here, I'll show you. So they come in cute little dust bags like this. This is the Issey Miyake. Oh gosh, I'm going to butcher this. Lou Dissy. Lou Dissy. So your fragrance comes in this case that you can travel with. These are so perfect for travel. These cases, they easily open up and your fragrance is in there. This is such a good idea. Like who came up with this? And the case is magnetic, so it just clicks back in. And there's also a lock on it and your perfume is protected. I feel like I work at the department store as you pass by and I'm like, is he Miyake for women? Would you take a sample for me? Oh, that smells so beautiful. That's the only way I can describe it. It's very girly and clean, but there's like a musk to it. I chose Juliet has a gun, not a perfume. So this one comes in a beautiful purple color. They give you such a generous amount for the cost of the subscription and the high quality perfumes that you're getting. This is what I would wear on a day out shopping with the girls. And then we go grab some lunch after. You know your friends are gonna be asking what you're wearing. I'd ask. Finally, I have Tom Ford Black Orchid. I chose this one because it's very special to me, but I don't know why I can't commit to buying the full bottle yet. I wore this when I met somebody really special in my life. And this was the scent that I was wearing when I first met them. I actually was just wearing a little tiny, tiny sample bottle. I just never got to buying it again. So when I saw this on Scentbird, I was like, yes. I already know what it smells like, but for kicks. Oh, that night just came back to me. The sound of the pool table, the photo booth. Wow, scent is crazy. Scent is actually one of the strongest ways that you can leave an impression on somebody and to evoke emotion and memories. Like it just did for me right now. I do think that the scent is very mature. I think I'm actually gonna go with this one today because I'm hanging out with them, so. Yay! Thank you so much, Scentbird. All oh, this turned out to be so special. If you guys want to try out Scentbird yourself, you guys can use my coupon code for 55% off at Scentbird. They're available both in the US and Canada. If you've been curious to try out a scent but didn't want to commit yet, Scentbird, I think, is the way to go. And with that said, let's get to the get ready with me. I'm getting ready to go to the museum today with a good friend. And this morning I was listening to this podcast called The Psychology of My 20s. Gemma was talking about the topic of why we're so hard on ourselves, especially in our 20s. Well, I guess that's all I can speak for. In my teens, I was hard on myself, but there was always a saving grace of having a tangible accomplishment. Like in high school, we have the grace of being applauded for the things that we do. So the hamster wheel kind of has an end. Like getting awards in school, getting a pat on the back from your parents for doing something, or your friends, there's that gratification versus in your 20s, especially nowadays with social media and um, social media. It's hard to know when to stop beating yourself up. No, it's hard to know when enough is enough or what your personal limits say about yourself. I think living in New York made me feel like the rat race really just never ends because of the array of amazing, amazing souls that you meet out there. It really was just a matter of the relationship I had with myself. I did not have a loving relationship with myself and that's something that I'm still working towards building. I think the universe, I think, I just think whatever force that drove me out to do what I'm doing this year with myself. Taking this leap of faith on my journey of living alone and stuff and kind of leaving behind this life that made me feel like I was in a rat race or was never good enough. In my early 20s, I was just put in a situation with a lot of people who accomplished a lot of amazing things and I didn't have a grounded relationship with myself where I knew that everyone's paths are so different and it just sent me down this path of never feeling good enough for as much as I was accomplishing. And Gemma brought up the fact about nature versus nurture. It is within ourselves to, you know, want to try our best at things but it's also a matter of nurturing this narrative within ourselves to understand that we're on our own paths and that there needs to be a balance there of like yes strive for your best strive for greatness in your means but also nurture your self-talk not a lot of us at least i don't think i think a lot of my friends too they felt this pressure growing up to be greatness in some sense and i think our 20s is when our energy is like all the way up there and we're like yes 
I can be invincible, I can do da 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 da, you know, I can check off all these things on the list. And then what happens if we don't? You know, what happens if life happens? Which it will. It will slap you in the face with humble pie. I've never said that saying before, that feels weird. <laughs> I've never said humble pie before. Nurturing your self-talk as if you were teaching a child to ride a bike for the first time. Like you would never speak so negatively. I think I would be unrealistic if that voice doesn't have a sense of truth to it. Like if you know you weren't trying your best or if you were letting your anxieties take over, then you can use that to reel yourself back in to understand what you're capable of. But then it's also like, why do we have to talk to ourselves like we're in the Hunger Games? The target will always be moving. Satiate yourself with the little accomplishments that move you forward, but don't beat yourself up during the process for not getting to the goal. I promise you, once you start celebrating your little wins, it's going to make goal achieving and the process feel worthwhile, which it is. If you're moving, if you're making progress, whether it's at 1% a day or 85% a day, find your rhythm, find your path and give yourself that little check mark. We reach a part of our 20s where we're like, oh shit, we're grownups. No one's going to be there to pat our backs. No one's going to be there to give us the gold star. So why don't we do it for ourselves? As opposed to being like, oh, I can't believe I'm not there yet. I can't believe I'm so behind. I can't believe they get to do all this and you know, I'm stuck with this shitty situation. I'll tell you this right now, being hard on yourself is not gonna make the situation any easier. I feel like you know that. But as a reminder, as a reminder to myself, as I start to fix the dialogue I have in my head, it seems like all simple stuff, but simple doesn't mean easy. Breaking a bad habit is never easy. I just hope that we learn to stop being so hard on ourselves, take off that need for instant gratification, know that good things take time, whether it's your career path or good friendships or a lifestyle that's sustainable for you and the way you like to live. It all takes time. You really actually set yourself back when you decide to beat yourself up. And beating ourselves up sometimes doesn't look like straight up negative self-talk. Sometimes it looks like comparing yourself to somebody else's journey or sometimes it looks like strange habits that maybe aren't the best for us. For me, we're gonna get really close right now. I guess one day I can deep dive into this, but I used to stress eat a lot and it used to be a way of me giving myself comfort but after some therapy and mindful eating and this is gonna sound weird but once I started filming myself eating it has helped me heal my relationship with food and what I associate it with so much it's all in the mindfulness tactics it's all in the intentionality when you do something all of that and journaling the way that my pen and paper have saved me from going down shopping spirals eating spirals dark depressive spirals vent to a piece of paper I know you guys are tired of people online saying to journal. It heals you in ways where you don't even expect it. Like my communication has improved. When I revisit my journal entries, I'm like, I see that pattern. I see that when I do this, this happens. Oh, this lip color is so gorgeous. This is the NARS Modern Love. It's this dark peach mauve color so good also i need to point out that my talks always get a little deep I know that it's not like that all the time but when i get like a pinch of inspiration i have to communicate it in some way out loud for myself to hear i forgot who told me this but when you learn something and you teach it you get to learn it twice i guess that's why i I do this. It sounds like I'm preaching, but please know that I'm just trying to solidify ideas so that I can hopefully carry it out in the following years in my truest form. It's never like a, here's how to live a good life. It's more of like, Tammy, you might need to hear this today. So we're gonna talk. I'm doing everything out of order today. I went to a coffee shop this morning and somebody brought their newly born wiener dog. It was five months. I just melted. His name was Henry and I really want a dog of my own. The oxytocin that petting a dog and hugging a dog can give you? Indescribable. But I know it's not responsible right now. It is not the responsible choice right now, especially because I want to travel. Let me live that life first and then we'll get a little furry baby. I love when my bangs are down because I don't need to do my eyebrows. I'm just going to chill back there. Oh, I broke a nail. It just popped off, so I need to glue this shit back on. I'm trying to figure out what I want to wear today. I kind of want to just be casual, but still feel cute, you know? Before, after, thinking about wearing this cute ass maxi skirt from Off-White. I found this at Second Street. By the way, if you guys ever shop at Second Street, mention my name, show them my Instagram for 10% off. This Sunday school baby tee. But I do need to steam these items. Let's get to steaming. Ha, ha. love the steamer because you can just fold it down it's so lightweight and barely makes any noise just pop this off fill it with water and you're good to go i got this off of amazon so i'll link it down below i love it i love the fit it's comfy it's flattering and 
and it's casual. I think I'm gonna complete the outfit with the cottagecore salamins. Okay, I never knew that salamin was pronounced as salamin. At least that's what I think. That's what I googled. I would always say salamon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Y'all can keep getting at my pronunciations. I'm here for it. I just realized I never heard anybody say it. Actually, I've heard somebody say it, but they said salamon. So I guess from then on, I just thought it was that. But yeah. I'm gonna wear the XT6 Advances in Cottage Core. I think it complements well with the denim. And I think I'm gonna go with this vintage coach bag that I found at Second Street. <gasps> Cute! Can't forget my perfume. Lock it. I can bring it with me. I still need a glue on my pinky. Where's my glue at? Oh shit, let me take off my shoes. Okay, I can't find my nail glue, so fuck it. We're just gonna go. I honestly don't remember where I put it. I had it yesterday. Oh well. Package by the last crumb. That was what you call a staged entrance. This is what I did just like two seconds ago. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's open this. What the heck, you guys? We got cookies. All right, let's open this. So swipe right for cookies. It says, open the damn box. <laughs> Dang, okay, aggressive. <laughs> I'm like speechless right now, what the fuck? This is insane! The founders say, we believe life should be taken more seriously. Ourselves, less so. Word. How did they make a cookie sexy? The James Dean? The names are so naughty. Hi Tammy, so excited for you and your friends to try the world's most luxe cookies. You'll soon see how shockingly delicious they are. Until next time, the last crumb. Wow. Which one do we try? You know what? We're gonna go with the good old chocolate chip. That'll be the ultimate test. You guys, I'm lighting a candle to set the mood because this is fucking sexy. A chocolate chip cookie so good your grandmother will disown you. I warmed it up for 15 seconds. It's so soft. Mm. That might be better than sex. I kid you not, that might be one of the best cookies I've ever had. This isn't sponsored or anything. And I've had a wide array of cookies, like insomniac cookies, Levain cookies. But to me, Levain cookies, hot take, are a little too decadent and too sweet. And I really can only have like two bites and I'm kind of done with the cookie. This, I want to keep eating. They perfected the sweetness level. You get the gooiness, but you also get the chewiness on the outer rim. And little flakes of salt. Let's try another one. Okay, I don't know which other one to try. I feel like a drug dealer. I walk up to you in a park with a trench coat and I'm like, which cookies do you want? Which one sounds good? Salted caramel macadamia, lemon bar, banana cream pie, chocolate lava, red velvet. I'm just gonna close my eyes. What the velvet? I totally did that on purpose. Oh, that matches my hair. Ooh. She's beautiful. Girl, we're matching. Oh, hey. Look at that. Red velvet hair. What the fuck, Red Velvet? Perfect name. Mm. You guys really have to try this. I would not lead you astray, especially with desserts. Again, not too sweet. I'm always so afraid of cookies being so goddamn sweet. The last crumb, y'all did that. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was just some PR stunt. You know when the marketing is too good? You gotta have some suspicions about the actual product. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But most brands actually do like a full strike and get the marketing right, get the products right. I think Last Crumb did that. Let's try one more. Let's try something a little less chocolatey. This is Donkey Kong, which is banana cream pie. 
I personally love banana flavored desserts like banana milk, banana bread, just bananas. Oh, it's salted on top. It smells great. It doesn't smell like rotten bananas, which sometimes banana desserts can smell like. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. How did y'all get that caramelization? This might be my favorite one next to Better Than Sex and then Red Velvet. They're all good, by the way. A movie night with a box of these with your friends. Each bite, I like took my time with it. The old me would have been excited to eat it and then scarf it down. Before I know it, it's gone. Take your time with desserts. It can be such a great experience as opposed to it being such a guilt-laden thing. I need to call over my friends to help me eat these cookies. What a great way to start wrapping up the day. Hello. Hey, do you wanna come over? I just got delivered a dozen cookies and they're all so good. All right, see you, bye. bye. Mm. Yes.